Brady family's involvement in sharing Hannah's story does not end with Hannah's brother, George. George's daughter, Lara, continues to find ways to spread her aunt's story to the next generation. There's a woman in Japan. Her name is Fumiko Ishioka. She decided to teach kids in Japan about tolerance education. In particular, in Japan, it's not as uh, approachable to talk about your history, especially their own role in World War II. So she thought, what if I take a completely different time, pe time period in history that took place uh, in a very different geographic area, a different time period to different people? The Holocaust, why not? She wrote to these museums in this faraway place in Europe, and they all said, Japan, you're kidding, no way, we're not sending anything. She is very persistent, she fits into my family perfectly, and she kept writing, and eventually uh, she received five different artifacts. She received a child's shoe, a sweater, an empty can of Zyklon B gas, which is what the Nazi used to gas uh, the prisoners, and a suitcase. And the suitcase was in particular interesting to the kids that she worked with <coughs> because it had a name on it. But this one said Hannah Brady on it, these mysterious numbers, 625, and then below it had GEB, which is a short form for Gebel and born in German, and May 16, 1931. So they understood that this girl, whoever she had been, had been a child during the war. And so these kids were particularly interested in, in this suitcase, and the reason they were really also interested was there's this word here called Weissenkind, or spelled Weissenkind, which is the German word for orphan. Uh, so this is how our story started. This is in 2000, after Fumiko had received the suitcase, she started an exhibit just around the suitcase and the other stories that she knew about the Holocaust. And eventually she actually managed to find uh, a hmm, woman at a museum who tracked down drawings, five drawings which had the same name, Hannah Brady, in the top right-hand corner, you can see it. Uh, and based on these drawings, she knew that this girl had actually been, prior to her time in Auschwitz, in a camp called uh, Terezin, which is a ghetto in the Czech Republic. This list, as I mentioned, is one of thousands of lists of all of these Czech Jews who went primarily through Terezin and then most of them out east, in particular to Auschwitz. But what's really sad about this list is that most of these names on these thousands uh, have a check mark next to them, like Hannah's here, and that check mark means that they didn't survive. And uh, suddenly there was this woman in Japan <laughs> saying, not only do I have your suitcase, but I have a group of kids who are called the Small Wings, and their motto is that they want to create peace with their own hands, and they're using your sister's story to share that message, and they would love any details that you have. And in January of 2001, we decided to go to Japan and actually meet with this group, uh, which was very interesting. <coughs> And uh, it was certainly one of the more impressive or more interesting uh, trips of our lives because it's very strange to be in front of a group of 500 kids, not be able to speak their language. And there was a bit of a guilt factor because we arrived at the school and uh, Nico told us that these 400 kids had learned how to sing a Hebrew song and a Yiddish song. And we thought that was wonderful because we speak neither. <laughs> They had been thinking all of this time about the loss that George had had by losing his sister and, and not only his sister but his parents, but also what it must be like to live with that every day and never really have closure because there really is no way, no obvious way to have closure. But this picture was particularly remarkable because there is my father in his more present uh, appearance uh, and he started life over.